Now we are going to look at the major parts of a cathode ray oscilloscope and the main uses. What are some of their uses? So we look at the major parts. So we said, some time back we looked at the cathode ray oscilloscope. We said this machine helps uh, in producing cathode rays. Uh, to just remind ourselves, the main parts of a cathode ray oscilloscope are we have the heater, we have the cathode, we have the grid. In that order, we have the anode. So this is the heater, this is the cathode, this is the grid. Uh, here we have the anodes. Then we have the plates. The first one here, which looks horizontal, is actually the Y plates. Then the one which looks vertical is the, y, the X plates. So you start with the Y plates, then the X plates. Then you move to fluorescent screen. These dotted ones, what we have dotted here, these are electrons moving. And those electrons are moving at a high speed, so they can be called cathode rays. Remember, inside we don't need any air, so it is a vacuum. There's a vacuum here. So these are the main parts. We also said the heater, the cathode, the grid, and the anodes, they have one word. You can call them electron gun. So electron gun consists of a heater, the cathode, the grid, and anodes. Then we have also one word which represents the two plates, Y plates and X plates. You call them the deflecting system. And then we have the fluorescent screen. So the cathode ray oscilloscope is divided into three main parts. The electron gun, the deflecting system, and the fluorescent screen. So if somebody asks you, what is the work of the electron gun? You have to give the work of all this. The work of the heater, the cathode, the grid, and the anodes. Then what is the work of the deflecting system? You talk about the work of the Y plates and X plates. And then finally, the fluorescent screen. Now, we are going to look at some of the major parts. What is the work of the heater? The heater, as the word says, it is work is just to heat the cathode. The work of the heater is to heat the cathode. What is the work of the cathode? To produce electrons by thermionic emission. Once heated by the heater, it is work is to produce electrons by thermionic emission. You see these dotted lines, they start from here, which means they start from the cathode. So the electrons are produced from the cathode. So the work of the cathode is to produce electrons. What is the work of the grid? To control the number of electrons which are reaching the screen. You see, this space is the one which allows electrons to continue. If this, pla if this part or pla place or space is what closed, then no electron will reach here. So the, this grid, sometimes we call it the control grid because it's the one the controlling the number of electrons reaching the screen. And as it controls the number of electrons reaching the screen, it also controls the brightness. You know the brightness of the screen depends on the number of electrons reaching the screen. As these electrons strike the screen, they, they produce what? Light. You see? So the more the electrons, the more the light. So it is the grid controlling the brightness of the screen and therefore controlling the number of electrons reaching the screen. Now, once these electrons now go to the cathode, to the, I mean to the anodes, the anodes are, are what? Positively charged. The electrons are negatively charged. So what happens? They are attracted. So the work of the anode is to focus, you know, focus the electrons and then accelerate them, increase their speed. So these anodes, their work is to focus the electrons and accelerate the electrons towards the Y plates, towards the deflecting system. Now, what about the Y plates? What is their work? Their work is to deflect. You see, the X, Y plates, and the X plates, they are called deflecting systems. The deflecting system. So their work is to deflect. Y will deflect electrons vertically. X deflects electrons horizontally. Then finally, the electrons reach a, a fluores the what? The fluorescent screen. So what is the work of the fluorescent screen? It is to produce a bright, sop a bright what? spot of light or to produce waveforms. Waveforms, those are pictures. You see? Okay. Then we have the vacuum here. What is the work of the vacuum? Why don't we need air here? The reason why... The, the, the cathode ray oscilloscope, the tube must be evacuated. Evacuated means 
air should be removed. There should be a vacuum. The reason why it should be evacuated is because air is going to interfere with the movement of these electrons. So the cathode ray oscilloscope must have a vacuum, must be evacuated so that the air molecules don't interfere with the movement of electrons. So now we are going to put uh, this into writing, the uses of the main parts of a cathode ray oscilloscope. So now question 2a, Roman 1 says, state the functions of the major parts of a cathode ray oscilloscope, 7 marks. State the functions of the major parts of a cathode ray oscilloscope. Now, the, so in this question, you first need to mention the major parts and then mention the functions. So here are the major parts, as we have just talked about. The heater is one of the major parts. It is work is to heat the cathode. Very easy to remember. Heater heating. The cathode is another major part. It is work is to produce electrons, to emit. So the cathode emits electrons by a process called thermionic emission. We have summarized the uses and the parts. The grid is the next one. It controls the number of electrons which are reaching the screen. And for that reason, it controls the brightness of the, of the, what? Of the screen of a cathode ray oscilloscope. The anodes, their work is to focus and accelerate electrons towards the deflecting system. The Y plates and X plates, their work is to deflect electrons. Y plates will deflect electrons vertically, that is their work. Then the X plates will deflect the electrons horizontally, that is their work. Then when electrons reach the screen, the fluorescent screen, the work of the fluorescent screen is to produce, it produces a bright spot of light and waveforms as electrons strike it. So as the cathode rays strike the electrons, the fast moving electrons, the work of the fluorescent screen is to produce the bright spot of light and also to produce waveforms. Waveforms, those are pictures. Those are the major parts and their uses. Now let's move on and talk about applications of a cathode ray oscilloscope. If somebody asks you a question, state four applications of a cathode ray oscilloscope. The first one is to measure PD. PD means potential difference. When you're writing PD, you write small p and small d with a dot in the middle, PD. To measure PD, PD means potential difference. You can choose to write in a short wave PD, measuring PD, or write in a full potential difference. A cathode ray oscilloscope is also used in the television sets. If you have seen a television set, you realize that the front part looks wider like a torch. Then the behind part looks smaller. Although these days we have modern TVs. But inside the TV, there is a cathode ray oscilloscope. So one, to use it, we use a cathode ray oscilloscope to measure potential difference, PD. We also use it in television sets. We use it to study waveforms of an AC. Those are pictures. How the pictures appear, how the waveforms appear of an AC. AC means alternating current. We also use it to measure frequency of AC. Frequency of an alternating current. Now, we have just said that a cathode ray oscilloscope can be used to measure potential difference. How does this, how does it work? How does it do its work? So let's look at the second question, part B. If the voltage gain on a screen of a cathode ray oscilloscope is 5 volts per centimeter, if the voltage gain on the screen of a cathode ray oscilloscope, CRO, is 5 volts per centimeter, find the PD if the deflection is 6 centimeters, 2 max. You see? So when we say 5 volts per centimeter, if you break that word, put the volts alone, put the centimeters, per centimeter means every 1 centimeter is 5 volts. That's what that thing means. So you simply say, 
every 1 cm is 5 volts. What about 6 cm? So in other words, they are saying uh, when you have 1 cm, the deflection causes 5 volts. What about 26 cm? It's like saying 1 egg is 5 shillings. What about 6 eggs? What do you do? You multiply. So 1 cm is 5 volts. What about 6 cm? It will be 6 times 5. So the PD will be 30 volts. You see? So when we say, uh, when we say 5 volts per centimeter, it means per centimeter means every 1 centimeter. So every 1 centimeter is 5 volts. So you write that 1 centimeter is 5 volts. What about 6 centimeters? You multiply. So you end up with 30 volts. So the screen of a cathode ray oscilloscope always looks like this. You see? This is how the screen looks like. So we are saying, when you say 5 volts per centimeter, it means if this is 1 centimeter, you see, every 1 centimeter, 5 volts, another 1 centimeter, 5 volts, another 1, 5 volts, another 1, 5 volts, another 1, 5 volts. So you see, so if there are 6, if the deflection on maybe the y-axis is of 6 boxes, which means each one is 1 centimeter, so each one is 6, and you have already known that every 1 centimeter is 5 volts, so you keep on adding. 5 volts, another centimeter, 5 volts, another centimeter, 5 volts, 6 times, which is the same as just multiplying 6 by 5. So you end up with 30 volts. You end up with 30 volts. We also said that a cathode ray oscilloscope can be used to produce waveforms, pictures. So we have different pictures here. You see, there is this, there is this, there is this, there is this, and we have this. Now, these are some of the pictures which may appear on the screen. Just as when you watch a television set, TV, when you watch, you watch TV, you realize that there is, you always have pictures. So supposing in, on the screen of a cathode ray oscilloscope, the pictures look like this. What do these pictures mean? That's what this question is asking. That in a CRO, in a cathode ray oscilloscope screen, which we call oscillograph, because it's like a graph. In a cathode ray oscilloscope screen, the following waveforms were produced. Explain their meanings. Six marks. How many diagrams are there? There are six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So each one is one, one. So if you see on the screen a dot, you know, just a dot like this on the screen, what does that mean? What about when you see a horizontal line? What does that mean? What about when you see a vertical line? Just like this. What does that mean? What about when you see something which looks like a snake? Something like this. What does that mean? What about this shape? Where you have this, you have this, then again a horizontal line, then you have this, you have a horizontal line. What does that mean? What about if there is no horizontal line? You just have this. What does that mean? So let's look at the first one, the meanings. The first one means the time base is off and the Y plate signal is also not there. So the time base is off and there is no Y plate signal. You see? So both the, both the time base and the Y plate, they are off. There's, the time base is off. Then the Y plate signal is not there. So there is nothing to show. So you just end up with the what? A dot. What about if it is a horizontal line? This one now means the x-axis, x. Mm, there's something on the x-plate. That is now the time base. The time base is on. What about the y-plate signal? It's not there. No y-plate signal. What about when it is now the opposite, vertical now? It means the y-plates are on. But the time base is what? Off. What about the one which looks like a snake? That one is an AC signal. Or you call it a sweep plus a Y plate signal combined. You see? A sweep and a Y plate signal combined. The two are combined to, to form what? What you are seeing, which looks like a snake. Or you simply call it AC signal. Then when you see this one, 
where you have horizontal, you have this, another horizontal, you have this. It means half wave rectified AC. AC means alternating current. We shall look at what we mean by half wave rectification and a full wave rectification later. But once you see this on the screen, it means it is a half wave rectified AC. It means a half wave rectification. Then when the horizontal line is not there, you just see this, this. Here you have this horizontal, then you have that horizontal, you have that. This is a half wave rectification. But when the horizontal is not there and you end up with this, that one we call it a full wave rectification. Or you say full wave rectified AC. Those are the meanings. Once you see those pictures, you see those waveforms on the screen of a cathode ray oscilloscope, that's what they mean. Now let's move on to X-rays. And we shall begin by asking ourselves a good question. What are X-rays? One mark. X-rays are electromagnetic radiations produced when cathode rays are suddenly stopped by matter. You see? When cathode rays are suddenly stopped by matter. So, when cathode rays are moving, remember we said cathode rays are fast moving electrons. If they are moving, then you go ahead of you you go ahead of them. You know they are passing here. Then you bring for example a metal target like a tungsten and you put in front. So when they come, they have nowhere to pass, but now they strike, they hit the metal target. At the end of the day, X-rays are produced. So X-rays are defined as electromagnetic radiations of very short wavelength produced when cathode rays are suddenly stopped by matter. You see? Now, what are the properties of X-rays? Some of these properties, they are like the ones of cathode rays. There is where they are similar, there is where they are different. For example, the first one. They are the same. They travel in straight lines. That is also one of the properties of cathode rays. So just like cathode rays, X-rays also travel in straight lines. They readily penetrate matter. So if there is any material put in front of them, they will try always to penetrate unless otherwise. But they readily penetrate matter. They have no charge. For them, they are not negatively charged. They are not positively charged. So they have no charge. And if they have no charge, you could also as well say they are neutral. They are not deflected by magnetic fields. They are not deflected by magnetic fields. What does that mean? If you bring two magnets, you bring here one magnet with the south pole, then here another magnet with the north pole, then I will allow X-rays to pass in the middle. They will not bend towards the North Pole. They will not bend towards the South Pole. They will just go straight. What does that mean? They are not deflected. Don't use the word bendings. Talk about use what? Deflecting. So they are not deflected by magnetic fields. What about if you brought an electric field? An electric field means you bring a positive plate here. You bring a negative plate here. Then you pass the X-rays in the middle, what happens? They will not bend. So they will also not be deflected. Just as they are not deflected by magnetic fields, they are also not deflected by electric fields. They also cause ionization of gas molecules, just like cathode rays. So when uh, X-rays pass and there is a gas, gas molecule somewhere, it will make that gas molecule either positively charged or negatively charged. Ionization comes from the word ions. Ions. And ions, we have only two types of ions. Positive ions and negative ions. So X-rays can go, cause a gas molecule to have ions, to have either positive charges or negative charges. So they cause ionization of gas molecules. They also affect a photographic plate. So if you bring a photographic plate where they are passing, X-rays will affect. They affect a photographic plate. You could as well say they affect a photographic film instead of the word plate. They mean the same thing. 
they give interference and diffraction effects. Remember, X-rays are electromagnetic waves. And all electromagnetic waves, they cause interference. They also cause diffraction. So they give interference and diffraction effects. They are, just as I've said, they are electromagnetic waves or radiations in inertia, naturally. They are electromagnetic radiations in inertia. While for cathode rays, they are electrons in inertia. X-rays are electromagnetic radiations in inertia. And lastly, they eject electrons from matter by photoelectric emission or photoelectric effect and other mechanisms. They eject electrons from matter by photoelectric emission and other mechanisms.